Okay, on today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a waterfall, kind of landscape. Um, this is the color palette I'm going to be using. If you're using Procreate, which is the app that I'm using, you can make a note of the hexadecimal codes, which is in the description, and then you can go on to Procreate in the color palettes, go on to the value option here, type in the relevant hexadecimal code, press enter once you've done that. So it's not enough just to type it, you have to press enter, uh, and then it will give you the color selected up here. And then you can start to build your own palette that is exactly the same as the palette I'm gonna use for this tutorial. Okay, for my uh, brushes, to begin with, I'm gonna start with an airbrush. I may use some different textured brushes a little later, but just to start to map in the composition and the main sort of plotting in of the areas, I'm gonna use a soft airbrush. It may well be that I don't feel the need to get to any other kind of brushes for the piece at all, but certainly I'm going to begin with the airbrush. So I'm just going to create quite a large soft brush to begin with. Go to the first color on my selection of colors here. So it's almost the white, but it isn't quite. And I'm just gonna block in a section at the top there. It's not really going to come down any further. I may well use this colour again later for on the actual water itself, but I'm just creating a top section here because this is where the light source is coming from. So there's going to be a patch here at the top that is going to be quite light. I'm then going to go to the next blue along on the top strip of colours. And I'm just going to start trying to get an idea of some of the formations of rocks here. So I'm going to place in perhaps a slightly more or a slightly closer to formation of rocks. So I'm already creating a sense of a dip or a, a gap in the, in the formation that the water can start to cascade down from. Because remember, this is a waterfall. Water will typically go for the, the easiest route. So it needs to have a, a place to fall from. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the next blue along, turn the size of my brush down because I want to be a little bit more precise at this point. I'm really not being too precious about it. I'm just really at this stage starting to get a sense of some of the formations. I've not got an exact idea of how it's going to pan out, but we'll see. I've got an idea of the colour range and that's fine, and the effect, but in terms of the exact shape sometimes you just got to wing it and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. I'm not quite sure whether it's really necessary, but I think it might be useful to be able to add some kind of sense of a, a misty area here, perhaps where the water's kicking up kind of spray. So I'm not quite sure really. I just thought if I do it on a separate layer, it gives me options. I'm just starting to create a sense of a slightly more foreground area of rocks. And the same up here. I'll close this in a bit. The more I close this in, the more it's going to accentuate and exaggerate the sense of light from up in the upper area. I've got more blues along here, so I'll go to the next one. And the blues are going to be useful for the distant shapes, but I'm going to start using the, the, the bluey tones for some of the more foreground shapes as well. Probably going to add quite a lot of green to these, because one of the effects of atmos atmosphere is that it will often, depending on the the kind of lighting and the colour of the sky and the other factors, it will make things bluer in the distance. So I will be using the, the blue to create a sense of things in the distance, but just as a base coat to create a kind of tonal difference between things over there and things here, as well as the different changing uh, colours, I've got the changing tone. So I'm just going to stick to the blue for the moment, um, but I'll definitely use some warmer greens a little later on. But just for the minute, I just want to create a sense of some rocks, things to disrupt to the water, things for the water to spill over and go round. It's going to be a pretty boring kind of waterfall if it didn't have features to interact with. So these are just as important as the water, if not more important than the water itself, I'd say. Just think I'm going to close some of this down as well, really push the light up into that area. Like I say, just because I'm creating a, a blue kind of undercoat doesn't mean that that's going to be the overriding colour by the end. I'm definitely going to get a much more vivid green colour scheme coming into this as well, but it's just useful for now. Perhaps just on a, you know, monochromatic colour scheme to see the difference in tone a bit more clearly. I'm 
Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the first layer. I'm gonna add some more of these darker kind of tones into the background, sort of close down some of the light a bit. So I really only want the focus of light to be in this area and obviously the water itself. They're gonna be the two lightest features. So I just really need to get some of the lighter areas here. I'm also gonna go back to one of the really light blues Maybe turn the size of the brush down, the opacity up. And I think I would, I think at this point, I'm going to just create some sharper details in the background. It's not going to be too sharp, but I just want to create a suggestion that there is some sharper features up there. There's some definite sort of rock formation. So I'm going for some more jagged kind of forms. I think the opacity is a bit too strong there. I want to make it as faint as possible. I can always soften it up with a sense of spray from the water, create a bit of a mist at the top there to, to lessen the impact of some of these shapes. But I do want to kind of make a, a suggestion of some rocky kind of shapes. Okay, so I'm going to go again to the slightly darker blue. Again, start to pick out some slightly more sharp edges here. It's not all going to be soft focus by, by any means. These are going to be rocky shapes, therefore they, they need to have some angular qualities. I'm going to have the, the kind of some of the, the lines coming downwards and then also some lines that cut across it. So there's, I'm using two types of direction for some of these shapes. I'm using lines that cut across this way and then I'm going to use some lines that kind of cut through it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go back onto the layer above now, realizing that some of these shapes are not going to show up unless I go to the above layer. I'm going to go to the slightly darker blue again. These are going to be, again, more foreground shapes, so I need the darker blue to make them push forward. Not quite sure on the lighting yet. There may be some sense of light coming through and impacting the edge of some of these, but I'm, I'm likely to use a, a slightly different color scheme for that anyway. But just to begin with, I'm going to just use the tone to suggest distance on these formations. Excuse me, I've probably said formations about 100 times already. <laughs> I might have to cut one or two of them out in the editing process. I'm going to go for the absolute darkest blue now and I think I'm going to create a different layer just in case it goes a bit wrong. The layers itself are not always necessary but they're a good kind of safety net in case you really do stuff it up and it goes completely, completely wrong. It's a really good backup so you can just get rid of what's on that layer and then you revert back to where you were before you made the big mistakes. So I'm just using this now to really start to darken up. I, I'm not too, even at this stage, I, I'm, I, I'm not too bothered about any errors. I'm going to use the green and the lighting effects on the surface of some of these to really refine and improve them anyway. But I definitely need to continue pushing the, the sense of perspective and the sense of tonal shifts. Again, step by step, I'm just starting to see that I need to really close down some of the the lighter areas. I think if you went at this too suddenly with all the dark colours you're going to lose a sense of layers inf of information and texture so it's good to just start to build up the, the tonal values a bit more slowly rather than going straight at the darkest tones even though you, you kind of you know I have an idea that it's going to be darkest here and darkest here I still prefer to do it in stages and build it up gradually. Okay, I've got some slightly earthier kind of stone colours here. So these are mainly the blue colours, but I've got some warmer, more kind of browns, 
just warmer stone colours in general. So I'm going to use some of these to add a bit of variety of colour. Um, maybe not in the very distant formations up here, but certainly as we get more into these areas, you're going to see some slightly warmer shifts of tone from blues to browns. And that's one of the features that's going to help sell the idea that, that it's more foreground than the, than the other rock form. So I'm not doing it on full opacity, I don't want the full whack of colour straight away, I just want to sort of add a layer over the top of the blue. I don't want the blue to disappear completely, but I do want to start introducing more of these warmer tones in there. I also have some slightly lighter versions of that. the colour range here. Just try a few different versions. Again, you don't just want like two different types of any one colour. You want a, a variety. It's really going to create a lot more interest for the eye, a lot more kind of believability. And sometimes I like to just throw really kind of what seem like random colours into a scene sometimes. It's like a pinks and purples. Just because I think often the eye will pick up on those kind of subtle hues and colours even though the overall effect is going to be far from those types of colours, adding them in sometimes just livens up a scene, makes it more visually interesting. I'm not going to do too much of that now, but certainly a variety of different kind of stone colours is definitely going to be required. even if you don't necessarily have a go at this specific tutorial. I always find it interesting watching other people work. I just think that it's, it can be a very insightful pro thing to watch the process. And sometimes I'll gain techniques from other people that I can apply to a completely different type of subject matter. And there might just be something in their process and the techniques that just makes me think about something else. And then it ends up really being really useful for that other type of subject. Again, I'm just using a soft airbrush on this. I think it could be really quite useful to use other textured brushes. It's just not something that I tend to get too involved in. I like to get the overall effect. I like to also be in control of everything. I'm a bit of a control freak, so to use a textured brush where, you know, the brush is laying down for forms and shapes and lines that I'm not really in control of, I think really is, it, it just doesn't suit me very well. Okay, um, I'm going to start thinking now about adding some green tones in. I'm definitely going to use a different layer for this because I may decide I've overdone it in certain areas with the green and other areas I need to sort of build up more. So we'll see how this goes. So as well as the, the kind of stone brown colours, I'm starting to build in this kind of a sense of greenery as well. In some areas it's going to be completely highlighted and very vivid but there's definitely going to be, certainly in the sort of middle distance, there's going to be a subtle kind of green, more of a bluey green, really. So the first kind of green I have is, if I show you on the, the disc, you can see it, it's very much a kind of turquoisey kind of colour. So it's a mixture of the blue and green together, which is perfect for this kind of placement in the piece. So transitioning between the distant blues and the more kind of vivid foreground greens. So hopefully... This is going to help create that effect of distance, really further that illusion. You probably notice, although the tutorial is entitled Waterfall, probably the last feature I'm going to be adding to it is actually water. Like I say, I think without a clear sense of what the water has to interact with, then it's not going to work very effectively. So I need to get the land in first and then start to concentrate on the, the water itself. In actual fact, the water is probably going to be the easiest element because it should just kind of slot into place, fall into place, as long as everything else is, is working well. Okay, I'm going to move along my palette to a slightly more 
or a slightly stronger green. Let's add some of this to the top of the rocks. Darken up the edges here, make it a more, make it a stronger green rather. Let's have a look at the next color green. Again, a bit of variety is important here. Sometimes you won't even see the the difference between them, but I think that the variety and the texture of colors does make an overall difference. Even though it's not immediately apparent what the difference is, I think your eye appreciates the fact it's there, I think. So this is a lighter green, and this is where it's going to start really making a difference to the foreground shapes now. It's really going to pluck them out much more vivid. Again, though, I don't want it to be too bright. I do want this area, these areas to be quite dark, so I think I still need to work on the darker tones. Again, so these, I'm still using the dark color, but the pressure that I'm using with the, the Apple Pencil, which is obviously pressure sensitive, is far less in the distance. So I'm pressing on more in the foreground versions and I'm really letting go of the pressure in the distant one. So I want to, again, use a different technique, this time pressure to create a sense of distance as things go back. So I'm pressing on much harder for the foreground shapes like this and then releasing the pressure for the distance. Okay, I think it's about time that I started to add in a suggestion of the actual water itself now. So this is hopefully going to start bringing it all together and making more sense of it. So again, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to revert to the original colors that I was using. And perhaps the most important place to start is going to be the point at which to start the water begins to cascade down. So there is going to be a top sort of lip up here. So I'm just going to start rather hesitantly and begin to get a sense of where this top edge of the waterfall is going to be. And I'm going to have it catching the light the most at the top edge as well. I'm going to turn the opacity down actually. What I want to do, I mean this is going to be, I suppose it's going to be more equivalent to a long exposure type photograph of a waterfall. It's not going to be like a sports photograph where it captures every little globule of water. It's more like a long exposure, so you get like a misty, soft focus kind of version of the, the water. I think most most photography that you'll, you'll see of uh, waterfalls is, is this kind of mistier look anyway. So I'm going to sharpen it up and turn the opacity up for this top edge again. You probably notice, like most of my tutorials, if not all of them, I'm not zooming in and out. I'm doing this zoomed out throughout the whole tutorial, just to give you a, a sense of, of how things build up and how things relate to each other. So I'm not going into the absolute minutest detail that I would do probably if it was a painting that I was doing for my own portfolio. But for the benefit of the tutorial, I want to give you an overview of the composition and how to construct things. So I'm, I'm keeping it looser, therefore it's, it's more of a zoomed out version. So again, I'm using pencil pressure. Sometimes I'm pressing on more to create more of a vivid concentration of the water. So 
Maybe it has a few dips and points at which the water can stream down from. So I'm doing some little highlights here, perhaps the water's cascading down and it hits a, a little outgrowth and then it as it hits that point you get a little highlight where it it kind of spreads out from that point because it has an impact and then the water splashes around that formation and then continues to drop from there but it definitely has a bit of a highlight there at the top of it and you might have a few of those certainly on on the kind of the sections where it's a bit weaker on here it's, it's so forceful that it would just uh, you know obscure the view of any other little formations there we go with that word again I apologise, it does make me wince when I listen back sometimes and realise how repetitive I've been. Do a few more, just a, a couple of other minor little bits of cascading water as well. Would be easy to get carried away with this effect, it's, it's quite enjoyable so I think sometimes you need to be just restrained but it is quite an enjoyable step along the way. Okay, so we're going to come further down now. I'm going to turn the opacity down, turn the brush size up a little bit, and the water is going to start coming down into these regions. So I can start now to, in fact, I'm going to turn the opacity down. I really want to build this up gradually. Again, it's like a soft focus, but it's definitely going to be lighter than the other things that are in the scene. It's going to pick up a lot of the light that's up here, so it's going to be much lighter than the other features. So again, it would find a point at which it can flow through and over surfaces. Again, I'm going to turn it down, turn the brush size up. I really want to do this more gradually. It's obviously feeding through the rocks here. Maybe there's, it's not going to go all the way up to the top. It's going to be lower down at points at which the water breaks through. Maybe they're over the top of a, a rock here and then downwards again. You've just got to try and Imagine the journey of the water. Maybe it comes around here and around here, and then sort of around some smaller little rocks, and then joins up again. So you really have to try and just find your way, use your imagination. Imagine you were the water and you had to journey down in and around different rocks. Again, you can go over this with a, a darker brush again, just to pick out some more of those dark rocks, little rocks. In the mix. So the water's coming down here. Maybe it has a little bit of a step here and it drops down again. Maybe there's a point here in which it all drops over the top. So I'm kind of imagining it as various different platforms. So obviously we've got the main point at which the water cascades down, but then I'm going to have another kind of step here where it drops down maybe to a, a much lower region down there as well. So I'm trying to find areas perhaps where I can introduce more of those little cascades and drops because it's an, a very nice effect, I think.
I'm just going to go back onto the darkest color I've got here. I'm just going to use it to pick out some of the, the shapes that I want the water be to be reacting to. So if it's going to spill over a certain shape, then that shape needs to be more apparent, perhaps. Again, really important to pick up the, again, it's really important to pick up the, the light on top of these little rock shapes. If they're standing out and the water's hitting the top of it and cascading over it, then it's really going to pick up the light at that, that area. I'm going to go back to my green colors and use this just to start to create some shapes on the top of these rocks that, like I say, some greenery is beginning to appear on it. Again, I'm keeping it quite loose, just about the effect. So as I said before, I'm just adding a little bit of a, a sense of mist at the bottom of here. Not too much, just to, you know, if the water's splashing around as it falls, it would create just a little bit more of a, a lighter area here at the bottom as well. Okay, I could go into a lot more detail, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, I wanted to show you how to create a general effect, and I'm quite happy that it's kind of, you know, a nice effect overall. It could have a lot more detail on it, and I could certainly go into a lot more vivid, sharper textures and details into all of these areas, really. But in terms of the overall effect, I'm quite happy with that. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe and press the bell notification button. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people that supported me over at my Patreon page. If you want to see more information about that, there is a link down in the description. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. I shall catch you back here again. See you later.